And in the dream, he predicted three world wars. The first world war, he said, must be brought about, and I'm quoting from Albert Pike. The First World War must be brought about in order to permit the Illuminati to overthrow the power of the Tsars in Russia and of making that country a fortress of atheistic communism. The divergences caused by the agents of the Illuminati between the British and German empires will be used to foment this war. At the end of the war, communism will be built and used in order to destroy the other governments and in order to weaken the religions. Now, students of history will know that Otto von Bismarck forged a certain alliances between 1871 and 1898, uh, which brought about this war, this World War I. And Otto von Bismarck here says that he was a co-conspirator with Albert Pike, and he was the one instrumental in bringing about the First World War. Well, that's the First World War. Then he dreams that there must be, he is given in this visionary dream, a second world war. Now remember this was in 1925 that it became public in this book written by, uh, uh, by a cardinal uh, from Santiago, Chile, Rodriguez. He says, quote, The second world war must be fo fomented by taking advantage of the differences between the fascists and the political Zionists. This war must be brought about so that Nazism is destroyed and that the political Zionism must be, will be strong enough to institute a sovereign state of Israel and Palestine. During the Second World War, international communism must become strong enough in order to balance Christendom, which would then be re uh, restrained and held in check until the time when we would need it for the final social cataclysm. Well, there are some who may argue that the terms Nazism and Zionism were not known in 1871. Uh, you should remember, however, that the Illuminati invented both of these movements. In addition, communism as an ideology and as a coined phrase originates in France during the Revolution. In, eight, in 1785, Restif coined the phrase four years before the Revolution broke out. Restif and Bebouf uh, in turn, were influenced by Rosé, as was the most famous conspirator of them all, Adam Weishaupt. Then he has this vision, in this vision, not only one world war and two world wars, but here comes the third world war. He says, and I quote, The third world war must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agents of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. Yeah, that's what he says. The war, this was 1925. Please understand that. Uh, at least 1925. It may go all the way back to 1871 as is purported to do, but at least it was written in a book and published in 1925. So he says, back bef after World War I was just over a few years and before World War II even started, he's now thinking about this third world war and it says that it will uh, be caused by the differences between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, the Muslim Arabic world, and political Zionism, the state of Israel, mutually destroy each other. That's what it says. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economic exhaustion. We shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm in which, in all its horror, will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin and savagery, and of the most bloody turmoil. So he's against Christianity and he's against atheism. They're supposed to fight each other to the death, you see. Then, he says, everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and, and the multitude, disillusioned with Christianity, whose deistic spirits will, from that moment, be without compass or direction, anxious for an ideal, but without knowledge where to render its adoration, will receive the true light 
through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer. That's what he says. Brought about finally in, uh, brought, uh, brought finally out in the public view. So he's saying that Lucifer will finally make himself, you know, the, the good guy. He's going to save the world from these atheists who don't believe in deity and from these Christians who believe in the good God. Well, so it says, this manifestation will result in the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism, both conquered and exterminated at the same time. Well, I don't know if it's true, but I can tell you that it sure has played into what is being carried on in um, the Middle East today. And it looks like ev everything from World War I and World War II with the development of the State of Israel and with the Zionist movement and the Communist movement and the Atheist movement and the peppering down of persecution on the Christians of this world it looks like that may be Lucifer's attempt at annihilation of us all um, so that Lucifer will appear in the form of course of what the Bible calls the Antichrist and establish peace on earth for mankind <laughs> I got news for all those Illuminatists their little plan will only last for three and a half years and will be destroyed by the second coming of Jesus Christ himself. Who, by the way, is going to take all of us Christians out of this world before the seven years sets in, before this Luciferian ideal can, capt can capture the imaginations of people on planet Earth. Right, that John McCain has not uh, talked about my Muslim faith. In 2014, on Passover, the first day of Passover is when we have a total eclipse of the moon. The next one is on the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And then again in 2015, there's a total eclipse of the moon on Passover again, and then again on the Feast of Tabernacles. Now looking back in the past, when there have been these total eclipses on these set appointments from God, these biblical feasts, uh, there have been some amazing, significant prophetic things that have happened. Yes, uh, these tetrads, or these four moons, total uh, eclipses of them, happen rarely. But last century, they happened twice, 1967 and 1968, when Jerusalem was recaptured on Passover and Tabernacles, Passover and Tabernacles. And then again, right after Israel became a nation in 1948, it happened in 1949 and 1950. So I thought, oh my gosh, this is tied to Israel. Uh, and so I looked in the 1800s, there weren't any. 1700s, there weren't any. 1600s, there weren't any. In the 1500s, there were like four or five times, but none of them fell on the feast days. And then uh, in the uh, 1492 is when all the Jews were kicked out of Spain. Uh, and in 1493 and 1494, the same thing. And so I thought, wow, 2014 and 2015 looks like it's be pretty significant. All right, we know it's going to be significant just based on what you've said. A little
thou not know it? And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me, when I shall be sanctified in thee, O God, before their eyes. Thus saith the Lord God, Art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass at the same time, when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken, surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth, and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence, and the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him, and upon his bands, and upon the many people that are with him, and overflowing rain, and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself, and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Chapter 3. I think about one of the most disastrous decisions we're going to make, and you can mark it down. When we turn our back on Israel, we will not escape the judgment of God. We will not. And that is exactly the tone we are hearing out of Washington. You say, well... Israel is just that little piece of land over there. What's so significant about that? God. He said, I'll bless those who bless you, and I will punish those who do otherwise. How do you explain this? How do you explain that little band of people who just came back and took their land? Secondly, how do you explain this? There are enough hordes of people in the world who could just overwhelm them. And in spite of all the criticism they get, there they are, poised and ready to defend themselves no matter what. It is a dangerous thing to turn away from the nation of Israel. And yet that is exactly the tone that we keep hearing. And I just want to say to you, mark it down. It will be 